welcome to the September 28th, 2017 business meeting. And uh, Laurel Butman is sitting in today, uh, our Deputy County Administrator. And Commissioner Schrader is attending Association of Oregon County's district meeting and will not be here. And Paul had to step out. So uh, would you please take the role? Certainly. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome Kathleen Rastetter, who's sitting in for our County Council, Stephen Madcor, this morning, and uh, Mary Rathke, our clerk to the board. Roll call, Commissioner Humberston? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. And Com Chair Bernard? Here. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. Well, uh, first up, we have a presentation. Yes, and I'd like to call uh, Dave Cummings up, and as well as Dave DeVore from our Technology Services Department, <laughs> to introduce this presentation and video of the Technology for Teaching program, always, uh, otherwise called T2. So, Dave, you're on, Mr. Cummings. Yes. <laughs> okay, it is on. Didn't see a little light. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dave Cummings. I'm the Chief Information Officer here in the county. And I'm here today to talk to you about a program within the, the county called Technology for Teaching. Now, I thought quite a bit uh, the last couple of nights of what I was going to say. We have so many programs that we developed over in tech services, it's really hard to really highlight any of the individual ones. And they kind of tie in to, to each other. Uh, we have our inter internship program over there through Clackamas Community College. We bring these kids over and they get credits towards their degrees and they learn technology and we like to hire them and probably a third of my staff are those interns. Um, we have the CBX, which everybody knows about, the fiber throughout the county. Not a dime to our name. We went out, got $8 million through a grant, built this great fiber, um, providing 10 times the capability out there. Canby School District, $10,000 a month to get into their databases. They hooked into our fiber, $255 a month, and we're making money. And then we went on to... Um, the Technology for Teaching program, which is, is very, very simple. It's just basically uh, a surplusing of equipment program. And we really didn't start out by thinking about that. We started out by thinking, we have these computers in the county and people don't get rid of them. And when they finally have to, they have to replace everything because they don't cycle them out quick enough. And because we're uh, the county is really a business in the way we operate and we intermingle all the technology together, that the software companies really drive having to get rid of this equipment because their new software upgrades and patches and everything that they put in won't play together and work right. So we have this equipment that's still viable, but we have to get rid of it. And at that time, uh, Mr. DeVore was working on his master's degree at George Fox University, and he had to do a lean project. And he said, well, why don't we uh, develop a program where we have a website and we put this equipment out on the website and dispose of it. And I thought, well, you know, we don't want to put it out there like a garage sale and sell it for $2 where somebody else uses it for a long time and we only get $2 back. Uh, and I also thought, having grown up in a, a family that was very sustainable and grew up in the Depression, and I can remember my dad <laughs> driving an old Rambler for years and years and years, if you remember what Ramblers are, and my mom said, we need to get a new car. And my dad would say, if that car's worth 25 bucks when we trade it in, we didn't drive it long enough. So <laughs> with that in mind, we wanted to see what we could do with the, this technology. And the schools came to mind. Having worked in uh, some large school districts in California, I knew uh, that the schools didn't have any money. And if they had to buy computer equipment, then they couldn't hire teachers. So Dave developed this uh, nonprofit program where we put the technology and equipment 
on the websites and made available to the schools and other public agencies. But the schools were our number one priority. And it worked very well. The equipment was flying off the shelves. The schools were picking it up. And they're starting to do programs, and I knew that the, being an educator in the old days, that the equipment could still be used for years and years and years as uh, standalone equipment in computer labs, uh, whether it's a library lab or uh, what they call ESL, English as Second Language Lab, uh, keyboarding uh, labs, uh, anything like that. The life of that equipment could be extended another 10 years. So here we have a commodity that taxpayers pay for, we use for four or five years, and we're extending the life on it throughout the system so that taxpayer money across the county can be used efficiently and effectively. Uh, just recently, in the last two summers, um, there's been a program in the Canby School District called Summer STEAM. And it's a program where these students that are engineers come in and they take our donated equipment and they dismantle the equipment, learn and study about the components of the computer, put the computers back together, load the operating systems, uh, learn the math and engineering of how to be engineers and actually go in and do robotics uh, that's not done by a joystick. The kids actually have to do programming, mathematics, uh, geometry to make this work. And when I first heard of the program, I went, oh my goodness, I wish I had something like that when I was in school or my kids so that, you know, when they were juniors and seniors and they were going to college, that they would have that technology background and they could learn all that stuff. And once I got in and saw what the program was all about, and it's a two-week program, and they've done it for two summers uh, already, I was just blown away. It's like, Wow, unbelievable. And when you see who these kids are, you're gonna be extremely amazed. And the whole program with the seeds that we're planting with this used equipment that we were just going to surplus and go to landfills, potholes, or try to sell and get a few dollars out, out of, is making a big, big difference in our county and our economic growth uh, for, because tomorrow's leaders and business owners are our kids and we're making a difference with this. So Mary, if you could play this um, video on the program, I think you'll be very impressed with it. Clackamas County is donating old equipment to spark new interest in engineering through its nonprofit Technology for Teaching. Technology for Teaching, which uh, we call T2 for short, was a program set up back in 2010 by Technology Services here in Clackamas County, mainly as a way to get viable but no longer usable equipment for the county to other agencies, school districts, and so forth that could use it. We've donated over a thousand computers, over 800 monitors, over 300 laptops. Um, for us, they have no real resale value. To try to sell them on the market, by the time we sold them and eBayed them and shipped them, we would probably lose money. But for them, this saves them from having to buy new equipment. One of these schools is Howard Eccles Elementary in Canby, where T2 has partnered with the STEAM program or science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, and use these recycled computers to teach these fifth graders about technology. For the schools, um, it equates to teaching positions because they can pick up this equipment and then extend the life on it for five, 10 years and still use that same equipment and get a lot of active use out of it for the kids. Uh, the summer STEAM program is a good example of that, where the kids use this equipment to enhance their knowledge and to be able to be competitive uh, in the world of technology. This program is called STEAM, or Summer STEAM, and we focus a lot on learning engineering skills that will help students understand some of the opportunities for them in the future. Students are learning how to use their math skills to program in JavaScript and in Scratch. They are programming things that they're, like programs they're making on their computer, and they're also programming robots. With the robotics program, I hope that the kids take the skills they learn um, programming and coding in the digital world and uh, see what that looks like when it uh, 
uh, switches over to the physical world? Well, I've always wanted to learn about more about computers because I have one. I'm, I've always been fascinated of how they work. Learning how to um, code and I'm learning all the parts of the computer. CPU is um, under the fan. The fan makes it so it keeps cool. Um, these are the RAMs. They keep short-term memory. Um, this is the hard drive. It, it yeah, it keeps long-term memory. My favorite part has to be actually just building the computer, all of it, because it's a new experience for me. Our goal is to get kids really excited about engineering, and I would love for this program to expand for students as they get older, so when they get into high school, we, we have a really top-notch engineering program. That's great. That's great. Wow. Boom. Wow. They're fourth graders going into the fifth grade. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing. There's just you know so many things around us that we don't see, and we kind of discard those objects. And if we just have a vision and take a look and see those things and grasp that opportunity and plant those seeds, here's kids that are in the fourth grade who are going to have a technological advantage as they go through school and as they go out onto the job market, as they become the young business entrepreneurs for our county, and we want to keep them in our county. Uh, so this program has just been 10 times, 100 times more successful than we ever imagined. And it was just an afterthought. It was an afterthought of a computer <coughs> replacement system for the county to make sure everybody had newer equipment. So it just goes to show what you can do with a little foresight and vision and a passion for what you want to do. And Dave and I have a passion. We have a vision. Um, this is not just another job for us. We want to make a difference with what we're doing. And this program uh, has certainly done that. Uh, I'm going to have Dave give you some stats on uh, how much equipment uh, that we've given out and the different agencies we give the equipment to. Does it work, Dave? There's no button. <laughs> Check your battery. Dave. They get used to us not knowing how to run these things. So. <laughs> You guys are supposed to know this stuff. Come on. <laughs> uh, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Cummings and also PGA for the great video they did with the kids. That was really outstanding work they did. Um, so since the program started about seven years ago, we started small. We we're trying to maintain small so we can keep up with the requirements. We started with just schools, but we've expanded. Uh, currently, we have seven school districts we work with, four very heavily. But we've expanded now to where we also deal with nonprofits in the region. We have about a dozen nonprofits. Uh, especially like medical volunteers from medicine and so forth and a few others. Uh, we have a few cities we work with now. Um, we have several agencies, including CCFD1, the fire district, and, and other ones like that, the libraries. And we also have most of the community centers get a lot of their computers from us. So across the board, we've been able to supplement their technology budget so they can use that money elsewhere. And to give you an idea where we are today, we're about 1,100 compu uh, computers at this point, about 400 laptops a little over 800 monitors, and then we have a, a slew of networking and printers and AV gear, anything that comes from the county that's still viable, that's not broken or so outdated, can't be used, we put it out there. Uh, and we've even had several servers and hard drive um, systems that have been able to be used by like the library network to supplement their storage and so forth. So we partner with everyone to see where can this equipment still be used. It doesn't cost the county anything. We don't support it. It's like we said, a nonprofit. We just um, clear it off, make sure it meets security requirements, that's viable. We, we shelve it, we put it out there, they come get it, and they support it. And so it saves us from having to pay for the e, e recyclers as well. So it's worked out to be a very good program. We're hoping to expand it over time. Uh, and yes, very, program. very, very simple idea for sustainability that's paid back a thousandfold. It's been a great program. Do you have any questions? Uh, this is Sonia. Oh, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> we switched places. Well, first, <clears throat> I want to reiterate what you said, and then hopefully our uh, press uh, attendee today will, will make sure this is in any article that he writes. But the, uh, the fact that you're saving school districts $10,000 a month, and well, let me repeat that, $10,000 a month, 
you have 9,700. <laughs> I'm rounding a little bit here. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, very important for people to understand and recognize that, that um, um, you know, <laughs> government is government to most people. Correct. So it's county government in the schools. It's all wrapped up into people's minds together. We pay taxes for all these things to be done. And that and there and and we're not just an isolated island and you handled it that way as recognizing that we're not just an isolated island of, of county of the county commission but rather part of the overall government of of, uh, of our county and that includes school districts and fire districts and all of those things so to save the taxpayers in general ten thousand dollars a month in every one of these schools that you've connected to I think it's remarkable the other thing is, uh, do, you ha do you have a link to that video that we could put out publicly on our Facebook pages and things? I think more people need to see this, assuming that it's legal to do so, because I know you had students in, in the uh, picture. Yes, absolutely. Could you send that to us? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I would like to, I, would, I certainly would like to post it on my Facebook page, and, and there's a few hundred people that will look at it. And I, who knows I how far it will go. In an incentive for other counties and other cities to do the same thing. Absolutely. You know, it's, all not, it's not all about making a few dollars off stuff that you sell. It's about extending the life and having people save a lot of money by not having to buy that new car. And it, it keeps always coming back to my mind. If that car is worth $25 when we traded in, we didn't drive it long enough. <laughs> and there's a lot to be said for that. There's still a lot of use out of a lot of different things that we use in life. And we're becoming so much of a throwaway society, it's, it's almost a shame. Great job. Thank you so much. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, this was very inspiring, wonderful video. I, it makes me very proud to be part of Clackamas County. Just a question, there's a lot of private industry that discards computers. Has there been any thought of expanding to accept computers from elsewhere or to encourage industry to do the same thing so that we can expand? We haven't looked into that yet, um, have we? Yeah, actually, we. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Well, we had we had to include they, they county council because the, non, the reason we did the nonprofit was for liability issues. Um, so we could have we transfer it without having liability come back on the county. Oh. And one of the reasons we did it also was we looked at including the um, private companies who have actually come to us. Problem is, though, most of them wanted to just dump junk. And all they wanted to do is come clear out their warehouse, and it was worthless junk in most cases. If it was worth them, they would have sold it. Uh, we have talked to maybe partnering with some of the other county agencies or um, other counties in the area. Mm -hmm. But again, it seems like most of them want to just dump on us to take care of it instead of actually processing it. And so since it's, we want to keep it minimal cost, we've kind of told them no. Although, I think it is time maybe we go back and start talking to a few of them again. Uh, that's something you that know. the door needs to be always open. We need to always look at. And, you know, I want to emphasize that we don't donate everything. If, if something sits there for so long that it doesn't get donated, it's obviously something that needs to go to the dump. That's a good point. And we still do have to surplus some of the stuff out to the dump. But 95% uh, or more of this, maybe 98%, is actually utilized and used and extended for many years. So it's a program that we can keep con and continue to look at and continue to refine and do better as we go along. That's great. Yeah, and I think uh, it's important to note that the savings of $9,700 a month does not include this program. If That's you can correct. imagine that they have to buy uh, 1,100 computers at minimum of, I don't know, three to $500. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money saved. Or they, or they never would have gotten them at all. And most, most likely they would never have gotten them. But at least this, if you know anything about education, and my wife is a teacher, and I know how much money she made, which was pretty sad. You know, for $100,000, you, you could hire three entry-level elementary school teachers right out of college. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes a big difference. So anything that we can do to stimulate that economy, you know, why do people move to Clackamas County? First thing they ask is, how are the schools? Mm -hmm. Are there jobs? And anything we can do with technology, and we're doing it to stimulate that economy, to make us grow, we're, we're the 
or the the Barlows that are putting in the Barlow Road, so you don't have to pay that fifty dollars to put your car your wagon on the on the Columbia and pay five dollars to come down the Barlow Road. We have a, a cheaper option for economic growth. Well, I can tell you, having served on a school board as well as having been a school teacher, uh, I know what your wife goes through. Yeah, absolutely. Well, she's retired now, so she's a good teacher <laughs> is one of the most underpaid people there are. Absolutely. And the, better, the sooner you get rid of a bad one, the better. That's correct. <laughs> There's always that. But That's correct. good teachers are, are definitely underpaid. Well, thank you for your passion and your vision. Thank it's you pretty so obvious. very much for allowing us to do this. Uh, it, you know, a lot of people say I'm, I'm working way longer than I should, but there's things I want to do. And, and if I can make a difference by the time I retire, that's going to be so valuable to me. And I can sit around in the bar and have a beer with someone and say, that happened because of me, <laughs> because I had a passion to do it. And I couldn't accept, no, you can't do that. There's always a way to do it. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Both of you. Good job, Dave. Um, so the next item is citizen communication. And uh, we have uh, less pool. <laughs> Welcome. I don't have any problem following an act, but that was good. That was real good. And uh, uh, my son has a film degree um, that I, it would have been hard pressed for it to happen had it not been for the community college and for Saban Skills Center. And why did I move to Clackamas County? Because I needed to get out of Multnomah County and it was one of the smartest things I ever did. So uh, that's really good to see and hear. And uh, again, I don't need to reiterate what you heard. Our, our, the technology department here, uh, the work they do on videos, um, it, it, it's excellent. Uh, the, the website that was upgraded a couple years back, really good. Um, so, so kudos to that. Um, it's interesting because the county, you've got so many different hats you wear that some things you hear great things about, other things you hear negatives. You hear both from me. Um, I talked to a lot of folks. I've been blessed. I've had thousands of business and residential customers in my, in my life. And I learned more from them than I did in school. Um, I, I really did and really have. Um, I wanted to, oh, one other thing. Please look up the Cracksburger School gearheads. Those kids are doing robotics over there. And, and if you want to donate, um, it, it's a great organization. And, and I would just put a plug in for the Cracks, Cracksburger gearheads. Uh, a couple other things. One is there's an article about Tiger um, taking lessons from Milwaukee's Orange Line experience. The problem with the Orange Line and the reason I fought the extension beyond downtown Milwaukee into the county is that in spite of all the money, it, it, the portion that was going into the county and many of the things that were promised were eliminated in order to get the end of the line to Park Avenue. So we lost our trolley trail alignment. We have parking problems everywhere. The parking structure is too small. Uh, the parking down there at Bybee is a mess and it's unsafe near East Moreland Golf Course. Take a drive through there. They eliminated the Herald Street Station. They eliminated so many things that we ended up with something that wasn't was originally promised. And frankly, they didn't follow the land use final order. So my advice to them would be when we get to the point or they get to the point of making a decision, we don't start waffling and deciding it's time to start shopping more. And what I mean by that is changing the alignment, um, having special interests or individuals come in and muck it up so that whatever they do with this tigered project, it doesn't drag on and rip communities apart. Um, I timed that very well, and I appreciate always the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, I just, you don't need to respond. I just want to add that, you know, one of the problems with the orange line is that uh, 
part of the way through, the government decided they wanted some of the money back. So I think that, I don't remember what year that is, that we're going to get some of our money back from the feds. And I've, I've talked to TriMed about spending that money on that parking structure. Because, you know, that's the first thing they always cut is parking structures. Um, but in that article, the mayor mentions, and I remember fighting for it, for it a little bit, is two stops in Milwaukee. I mean, that would have been a lot better, uh, but we couldn't get it. Anyway, um, uh, it's done a lot of great things. That's done some bad things, and that's the lesson that hopefully Tiger will learn. Um, I mean, compared to the Gresham line, when the gang crime stuff shot way up, we had a plan. We worked with uh, Metro, TriMet, and all those. We forced them to put more people there. And uh, so it, it's not perfect, but it's better than the first line, that's for sure. And each time, I hope we learn. Uh, then the economy takes a dive, and of course, uh, light rail ridership goes up, and then the economy improves, and light rail ridership goes down. So, uh, um, you know, uh, things change a lot. Um, and I've always, I've always had this one issue that people complain that, well, light rail is supposed to bring all these jobs and industry, and, uh, but they forget about the crisis we went through uh, that stopped a lot of projects. I, I could think of one just in Milwaukee that we were about to start, and then the economy took a dive. Uh, that was just across from City Hall. And, I'm, and if you talk to folks like at Eagles Landing, they are so happy that they hadn't started the projects right before the economy started. I mean, took a dive. And those who did, were, they were delayed. And they, uh, the, the greatest thing uh, about light rail uh, construction was the jobs it created. It created a lot of jobs. Um, so, I mean, there are pluses and negatives. And believe me, I thought about them all. Um, and I'm sure I missed a lot of them. <laughs> anyway, um, we have nobody else, so we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Okay, today's consent agenda. Under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the State of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Health Authority for Choice Model Services. Approval of a facility lease agreement with North Clackamas School District Number 12 for the Wichita Community Services Building for the Women, Infant, and Children Program. Approval of an agency services agreement with Youth Move Oregon for a drop-in center and peer support for youth, young adults in transition. Approval of a subrecipient agreement with LifeWorks Northwest for evidence-based parenting education classes and approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the State of Oregon, Department of Human Services for the operation of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program for Employment and Training Services. Under elected officials, approval of amendment number two and renewal number three for the contract documents between Send It Direct Mail and Fulfillment Inc. and Clackamas County Clerk's Office for ballot mailing and envelope storage services. Under Public and Government Affairs, we have a board order approving an extension of the cable television franchise with cable with Comcast of Oregon, Comcast of Tualatin Valley, and Comcast of Illinois, Ohio, and Oregon. Under Juvenile, we have approval of intergovernmental agreement and amendment number three with the State of Oregon for Title IV-E funding for youth at risk. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the State of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Department of Education Youth Development Division for Juvenile Crime Prevention Funding. Under Business and Community Services, a board order approving a tax foreclosed property for declar de declaration as surplus as established minimum bid amounts. Under the 
Department of Communications, which is CECOM, approval of an intergovernmental agreement establishing Clackamas County as a fiscal agent for grant funds for regional 911 projects. Under Technology Services, approval to enter into a service level agreement between Clackamas Broadband Exchange and the Summit Learning Charter for a dark fiber connection. And Tourism and Cultural Affairs, we have approval of a of a contract with Borders Perrin Norander for marketing agency of record services for the Tourism and Cultural Affairs Department. And that concludes today's consent agenda. Um, any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. On item uh, E1, do, do you happen to know what the surplus property is that uh, is being foreclosed upon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a presentation, a work session. Which one is that? Uh, there was a s small piece. Um, is, that the, is that the piece of land? Yeah. Not a house? There was, I think there were just pieces of land. I just want to double check on that. Doesn't have to be, if, if you don't know right now, that's okay. We, I can get with you after the meeting. It's and on the actual attached board order. Yeah. Uh, there's a... Um, Two, let's see, it looks like two parcels, one is, a, sorry, one is, a, there are two parcels, one is improved land um, on Southeast Lee Avenue in Milwaukee, and there's unimproved land off of Highway 26 in Sleepy That's Hollow. Satellite photo with the hole in the roof. That one. That one. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the reason I was asking the question is on, on, on uh, especially on uh, foreclosed houses and that sort of thing, if there's a, you have do we or can we look at them as a possibility for um, uh, low-income housing options? The, yeah, I think they do. It's, it's a, in the spring. Yeah. The, uh, oh, it's in the spring? Okay, yeah, thank you. They would usually need rehabbing, and I get that. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if that is something that we do do. We do do that. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, still learning here, still learning. So. Yeah. No problem. I don't mean to be nitpicky, but just because we're approving the consent agenda on item number four, the end of the first paragraph, individuals working towards, I believe it should be addiction recovery, not addition recovery and other, oh. and or mental illness. So just if we could interlineate that before we approve. Uh, and I actually have something also, not, not an issue, but a comment basically on the Comcast contract. It seems that you know, we struggle to get that completed. It's always short term. You'd think at some point we'd be able to reach some long term agreement. I'll tell you that as a small business owner, they have a minimum three year contract that you have to sign. Yet when we do business with them, we have to fight for months, maybe years to get a lousy six months. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, and I'll tell you, when you close your business and you want to end that contract, good luck. <laughs> anyway, um, with that, um, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. County Administrator updates. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I have some good news for you today, and I did want to point out that um, we were talking about donating computers. Uh, Mary reminded me that after um, the Damascus City disincorporated, we did donate a lot of the office supplies to the schools as well from that. So. Uh, we do try to do that. So I have, th I have three items today. Um, first is congratulations for Kevin Coe, who's a manager in our Housing and Community Development Division within Health, Housing, and Human Services. He was recently elected as board president for the Northwest Association of Community Development Managers, which is a coalition of community development block grant entitlement communities. Their primary goal is to share information and allow each community to better implement its development and housing programs. I think Kevin's new position is just another reminder of the quality staff that we have here at the county and congratulations to Kevin. Um, next, our Water Environment Services Department 
has qualified for a Leaders in Sustainability Certification, which is administered by the Resource and Conservation and Solid Waste Division. In achieving its silver certification, Wes demonstrated a commitment to sustainable business practices. I believe they're the first department that has done this, and we're looking at expanding this program so other departments can do the same. We've had businesses doing this for a long time, but it's about time the county departments had the opportunity as well. So details of this achievement will be presented to you at an upcoming business meeting. Meeting. And finally, I am very happy to relay that this past August 21st, which you'll remember was the day of the solar eclipse, uh, a new passenger record was set by the Canby Ferry. About 900 people took the ferry that day. 900. Then the next day, Mitsubishi Motors, the company, uh, held a photo shoot at the ferry for a future promotion of its new Eclipse model. So the ferry saw eclipses back to back days, which is Pretty rare, I think. Uh, so I'd like to thank those staff who run the ferry for their continuing stellar performance. I always appreciate, I had a professor in college who told us uh, a story about his brother. He was in Africa and got on a ferry. When they got out to the middle, the guy said, I'll be an extra $600. He said, I'm not paying that. So he pushed his car off the ferry. <laughs> wow. I'm speechless. You, you do realize we the, don't the, the do Portland that. region is where Shanghaiing originally started. That's though. right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, now we're on to C Commissioner Communication, and looks like uh, Commissioner Fisher's up. Good morning. I want to share, I was out with the Furwood CPO yesterday, went on a tour, and for those of you who don't know where Furwood CPO is, it's from Sandy to Rhododendron and not, I don't believe many people travel those roads unless you live there. So it's quite interesting to go on the tour. There's a lot of heritage and history in the area. There's the Dover community. There is a school for the blind that's there. There's the trout farm. There is a lot of land as you drive through and see the area. Why, 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 Warehouser. Is that right? Warehouser. You can see where they have um, harvested trees. You see, drive by where our county timber is, and you can see those forests. You go by, and you can see where areas have been cut and sustained, and where there's new growth. It is um, quite enlightening to go on these tours in our rural areas. In meeting with the citizens after the tour of the Furwood CPO, there are some really good discussion and interesting concerns. Want to just let you know that some people that live in that area can't get internet access, and so there are questions there. There are interesting, these aren't things that we can necessarily control, but it's always interesting to see how people live with electricity that kind of goes out and sort of surges, really interesting electricity out in, in the community. And also, the big topic of discussion was on marijuana and what's being done and where's the regulation and are we seeing the tax dollars and when will there be code enforcement and why aren't we doing a consumption tax to get more resources? Is there any way that we can do that? Very lively discussion about what needs to happen and, and a, really a frank conversation of it takes all of us together. It takes the legislature, it takes the county, it takes more than what we at the county can do. So we had um, a lot of talk about that, really, really a lot of concern out in our communities. So I want to share that with you. Another thing I want to share is I connected with um, Dave Mowry, and this is OMG, oh my God, that's me. Dave Mowry is a resident of Happy Valley. He is a speaker, writer, and facilitator of raising awareness to reduce the stigma of mental illness. He has a group that um, gets together, it's stand up, I gotta put my glasses on to make sure I get the words right, stand up for mental health, where they do a comedy presentation and they are changing the name to mental health at the mic. So he works with people that have mental health challenges and they do comedy. And I met Dave Mowry at the Stepping Up Conference to the Association for Oregon Counties and I said to him today, I said, while you were presenting and sharing your comedy, I, as a person in the audience, totally bonded with you, and I just felt like we became best friends, although you didn't know me at all. So today I had the opportunity to connect with Dave, and I wanna share this book. Just came out, it's, you can get it, you can order it online, 
it's his story, it's his blog, it's, it's all of the interesting journeys that he's experienced, and I highly recommend um, Dave's story to, to all of us. So those are just the couple things I want to share. His picture's on it, and I recognize him. Yep. So. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Humberston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I will try to be brief. Um, we had our fin final county college session this last weekend. Um, it's been an interesting experience. Um, I would say that one of the best aspects of it is the networking that we were able to, to uh, participate in, meeting the new commissioners in many of the counties in the state, starting to build relationships there where we can be mutually supported of one another on issues that are of mutual interest. As a, a semi-rural, semi-urban county, we sort of need to have good relationships both with our rural counties because of the things that we have in common there, but also with our neighbors in Washington County and uh, in, in Multnomah County because we have an urban footprint also. So those relationships, I think, will be helpful to us in the future working at the state, at the state legislative level um, in, in uh, bringing forward issues that are important to counties in a united voice. Um, learning about all of the different, um, I guess you'd say, lifestyles that the different counties have is, was interesting and what, what problems that we have that are in common that hopefully we can work on as we go forward. Um, we also attended a District 8 meeting of the AOC a couple of days ago, uh, some tremendous presentations on what Washington County in particular is doing for low-income housing. They have half a dozen to a dozen different projects that they are doing that uh, um, while that just scratches the surface of the need, certainly are the kind of projects that uh, anybody would be proud of to, to, uh, to put people in and uh, help them out with. The, the other thing we've been doing for the last few months is uh, what's called DISC training, which is essentially is teaching us board members how to understand one another and get along with one another and work with one another. And, uh, I think just from what I've seen in, in working with my colleagues over the last few months, uh, it seems to be working. Um, we enjoy each other's company. We work together well. We're, we're, we're fair and direct in our, in our dealings with one another, and um, we don't demonize one another just because we happen to disagree on a particular issue. We take our votes and we move on. And I believe that that's what the public actually expects of us and the way we should behave. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting experience, to say the least. Um, we had a meeting with the governor's staff um, who are involved in the cross-laminated timber issue. It was a very productive meeting. Um, the governor is very interested in this, in this product. Um, they were stunned at how much background work we'd already done and particularly pleased that we'd reached out to five of the major environmental groups first. And uh, I don't know if I've announced this before, but we have received qualified support from those five groups on, on moving forward. Obviously, I say qualified for a reason. They want to be sure that how we do harvesting, if we go forward with this project, is, is done away in a way that is thoroughly sustainable and uh, environmentally sen sensitive and sound. And I'll use an expression that we are using in, in, in our discussions with everyone about this, and that is, is that what we are going to leave behind in the forest is going to be every bit as important as anything that we take out of the forest. And if we don't approach it that way, we'll never get this done because we'll simply be in court fighting with each other, and there's no percentage in that for anybody except the lawyers. No offense intended. Um, we had the Clackamas Service Center lunch yesterday, honoring the folks that are, that, uh, and helping the folks that are providing food, clothing, and shelter for those that are less fortunate than the rest of us. And on that note, I want to just ask people to think about something. If you are not independently wealthy, and you don't have a year's worth of salary in the bank, and I suspect everybody in this room is in that position, then that is how close you are to being in the same position as the people we're trying to help. You could lose your job tomorrow. If you don't have a year's worth of salary in the bank or some other guaranteed source of income, you can lose everything in a very short period of time. A year's salary gets you to a point where you probably can get another job. If you don't have that, you can find yourself in the position some of these folks have found their, their, themselves in through no fault of their own. So um, 
There but for the grace of God go I, I think is the expression. Let's not forget that. It could be any one of us at any time. And that is all I have, Mr. Chairman. So now it is time for the puppy. I remembered this time. Oh. This is Pops. It's such a fitting name. He may be a grandpa kind of Pomeranian at 10 years old, but he does have a lot of spunk. Pops is the kind of senior citizen that wants to participate rather than observe from a resting position. He would prefer older children and adults rather than boisterous little whippersnappers. His fluffy coat needs extensive grooming and maintenance, so be prepared for the time it'll take to keep him looking fine. For more information about Pops and other adoptable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs. Thank you. Does it really say whippersnapper? It does. <laughs> it's not a word you hear very often these days. Well, as old folks, we, uh, we know how to use those words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the opportunity to host uh, Senator Wyden in Canby. It was... Uh, a fairly well attended, not the 1,500 we had last time, but, you know, it's 150, you were there. Uh, it, it was good. Um, uh, I thought he, he represented what happen, what's happening in Washington, D.C. pretty well. Clackamas Service Center lunch, which you mentioned, is huge. I mean, it was from last year, it was just two or three times the size of last year, and they raised a lot of money. I uh, want to thank the various Rotary groups for their contributions. Um, and a comment you made, I mean, one of the people that they service is somebody who actually had a medical bankruptcy. So your health, uh, health insurance, or lack of, uh, actually could be enough to put you on the street. Yep. Um, we met today with Mount Hood Search and Rescue, at least one representative. I want to thank Laurel for your hard work trying to find a location. For a number of years, we've been trying to find a location to help them out, and I think it's, it's uh, to our benefit and theirs that we will find a solution someday, and uh, probably sooner than later. Uh, we had, uh, last week, we had our North Clackamas Park board uh, meeting. Um, you know, one of the challenges we're facing is the uh, uh, Happy Valley uh, removing themselves from the district. I think it's a big mistake, and I hope Happy Valley re rethinks that. We, we wish they would stay. Um, there's been a lot of uh, growth in Happy Valley, and I think we've done an outstanding job investing in parks. Uh, just that same week, we had a uh, uh, grand opening of the Hidden Falls Park, which is 23 acres uh, that the Parks District negotiated with a developer, amazing piece of land, uh, huge for the community, connects a lot of trails and stuff. Um, I wore the wrong shoes, so I couldn't go look at it. Uh, and uh, it looked like it was going to rain any second now, but it turns out uh, that county commissioners do actually control the weather because <laughs> it turned out to be pretty nice. <coughs> Somebody actually asked me that after I became a county commissioner. Do you control the weather? <laughs> we uh, only wish. <laughs> it's, not in, it's not on one of our responsibilities. Um, anyway, uh, you know, the Parks District's done a great job. Um, Happy Valley uh, and the Parks District at one point had uh, considered putting out a bond measure, which never occurred. Uh, and there was a down economy for quite some while. So SDCs, which are what a lot of parks are created by, uh, were just about zero for a number of years. But I just think they've done a really great job. Um, and also, yesterday we met with uh, uh, Eagles Landing developer, you know, I, who uh, recently has been annexed into Happy Valley. I hope that uh, Happy Valley and uh, the developer will be able to work out some of their issues. And uh, I can assure you that Clackamas County, uh, if we can help, We'll work with Happy Valley to make sure that Eagles Landing is, is a success 
that the developer has been trying to do for years, but kind of in the middle of it, we call it a divorce. <laughs> uh, we're the, fa uh, the, the dad, and, and uh, f f sadly the child is, uh, is right in the middle of it. And mom got custody. <laughs> well, maybe not. We're still fighting over who's going to get the kids. Mm, yeah, that's true. That hasn't all been resolved. The visitation schedule. <coughs> well, you've had some experience with this. Maybe you should be the negotiator. Yeah. Happy to help however I can. And, yeah, I, we have, we're all ha would love to resolve this problem to the benefit of, of the parks district and potential development of uh, Eagles Landing. But uh, with that, um, we wish you a great weekend and we'll uh, end this uh, meeting. Thank you.